Today was an awesome day for Hyundai, and honestly, it was an awesome day for me. And I wanted to make a quick video about why I plan on replacing my EV6 with the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. So this car has been on my radar for a long time, and for those of you that have been following me or know anything about me, I've actually I've been a really big fan of the Ioniq 5. I think from a design, it plays to my childhood dreams of like a steampunk kind of hatchback design, and I love hatchbacks, I love wagons. So to me, right off the bat, the Ionic 5 with its pixelated lights and very cool hatchback design was a very appealing car. So originally when I bought my EV6, I actually had a deposit on the Ionic 5, but they wanted 5,000 over MSRP and I refused to pay over MSRP. So I ended up canceling it and got the EV6 for uh, MSRP. So that being said, that's also why I didn't get the Ionic 5 originally. The other thing that I actually particularly don't really care for on the Ionic 5 is the interior versus the EV6. So I actually prefer the interior of the EV6 with the exterior of the Ionic 5. So that being said, let's go down the timeline. So I bought the EV6 about a year and a half ago. At the time, the GT didn't even exist. I mean, people had talked about it, but it wasn't an option for me to buy. And that actually came out way later than when I bought my EV6 wind all-wheel drive. So the GT has obviously been on my radar. I love the brakes, I love the look, I love the performance. Everything has kind of been on the top of my radar. However, I knew that the Ionic 5 would come in a little bit hotter when it came out with the performance model. Hyundai has historically really pushed a lot of technology and a lot of cool f options and cool things on their N series cars. So I knew that when the Ionic 5N would come out, it would be a little bit more than just an improvement. We'll get to that in a second though. I started seeing a few rumors a couple months ago just on the Ionic 5 and it having a little bit more power than the GT, but also a slightly bigger battery, which honestly would have been a two big pluses. However, Hyundai came out swinging for the fences. Everything today was official. So you've got the official design, official specs, official torque, everything. Uh, and it is a very, very impressive car, especially if it comes in at the price point it does, which we'll talk about price shortly. But I made a short list of things that I wanna make sure I talk about why I want to replace my EV6 with the Ionic 5 N, the Ionic 5 N. So let's start with looks. First of all, it looks, it is phenomenal. Uh, the 21 inch wheels look so good. I absolutely love the way it looks. They're flush to the fenders for the most part compared to a lot of other cars. And it still retains that hatchback design. It's got wider fenders and it just looks so mean. And so all these little accents they've done, there's so much going on with this car yet from far away, it just looks like a simple, cool little hatchback slash crossover. But to me, it still is a hot hatch. I get that it's a crossover, it's a hot hatch. So number two, power. Of course the power is gonna be a big deal. The EV6 all-wheel drive that I have is plenty of power, 0 to 64.6, 4.5. Um, it's good enough power for the majority of people. It's actually faster than a lot of the cars on the road. This thing is next level. It's, it's, it's horsepower and torque numbers are indicative of supercars and just very, very solid numbers. So the power is obviously very good, but what I love about the Ionic 5N, which is my number one thing on the list, is it's not just they took the Ionic 5, N, uh, the Ionic 5 and just put bigger motors or stronger motors or whatever on. They completely redesigned almost every aspect of this car outside of aesthetics. The interior looks very different. The suspension is completely different. All the different aspects of the whole drivetrain are completely new and completely different from the Ionic 5. So it's not like the EV6 where they just took the standard EV6 GT line and put slightly faster motors in there, or bigger motors or whatever you want to call it, and you know bigger brakes and called it a GT. Now, I'm not taking away from the EV6 GT, it's a great car, but this is a complete true redesign of the Ionic 5. And to me, that speaks very highly of how this car is going to perform. And they did teaser videos a couple of weeks ago at the Nürburgring. And this thing is phenomenal. I don't care who you are. You could be anti-EV. You could be pro-muscle cars. Whatever you are, you can't deny that it didn't look like it was an awesome car. So to me, that's a huge differentiation between this and the EV6 GT. But I also think that's what's going to make this car become a very, very instant hit. I think it's going to probably get car of the year from a couple publications and I think it's gonna get really good press. So as long as they can price it properly and they don't have the awful dealer experience that we saw with the Kia EV6 of insane markups, which I know it will because this is an enthusiast car. It will see insane markup. 
Number two, if you haven't watched Carcine Korea's video on the Ionic 5N, please go watch it. First of all, Carcine Korea, he's one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, I've followed him for a long time because I'm really interested in kind of like what Hyundai and Kia have been doing. Even if you're not in a big fan of Hyundai and Kia, he really shows like what they're working on. He has really good access to a lot of their engineers and he does a really good job of making you go like, wow, this company actually knows what they're doing. So he did an unveil video and it is so good. He got so in depth with, with the menus and everything, and he showed some of the most insane options within the infotainment. There's so many things you can tweak on this car. Every little detail can be tweaked. Sound of everything. It's mind blowing. I don't even want to cover it. Just go watch his video right here. It's really, really good. Um, it starts in about halfway through the video is when he gets access to the car and he shows so many cool things One of the biggest things I want to talk about is the artificial sound That's what everybody's focusing on is like, oh, well, you don't need that. Why would you need that? You don't you don't have to have it It's very clear that you can turn any of those options on and off Please remember that just because Hyundai put it in there doesn't mean you have to use it So stop whining about it at the end of the day, their implementation is so cool I, I thought it was just like kind of like oh, you hear the sounds inside the car but when you actually watch the video, the promotional video, and then you see in the car scene Korea's video where he goes through the menu, it is actually kind of cool. There's like sonic boom electric sounds, there's uh, sputter, there's uh, crackles and pops. It sounds so cheesy, but I guarantee you all of us are going to be like, damn, that's cool. It seems like they implemented this really well, and you can see it in some of the video clips. So I personally am excited about it. You don't have to use it. But the fact that they're including it and they're doing next level things with it is so cool to me. Uh, you can tell that I'm genuinely just super excited about this car. And I feel like there's tons of hate already for it in the market from anti-Hyundai, anti-Kia people, but also anti-EV people who are just sh sh on basically, oh, artificial sound, school, blah, blah, blah. You know what? It is what it is. If you want to use it, use it. If you want that feel of muscle, don't buy an EV. That's great. But for people like me who are really excited about this next generation of performance EVs, the Ionic 5, I think Ionic 5N will, I think will go down as a car that really helped push outside of Tesla other cars into the realm of affordable uh, EV performance cars. So let's say it does come in right around 70K. There's a lot of competition at that. You can buy used M5s and, and, and cars like that. But I don't really think that's the same consumer. Like me, sure, I could have bought a $50,000 car that was way faster than my EV6, but I didn't. I wanted the experience of the EV6. I wanted the looks. And to me, that's where this car will succeed. It fills such a niche, but at the same time, it's causing so much stir already that I feel like reviewers are going to like it. I feel like publications are going to like it, and the general public will receive this car very well. Now, of course, there's going to be people that come in and say, well, it's too expensive. The average person can't afford it. I don't know, I don't really know, I don't have a rebuttal for that, I guess, but a lot of people said that about the EV6 and it's been a fairly successful car. And last thing I wanna to touch on is charging. A lot of people are like concerned about the range or you know, kind of like, okay, so it gets a bigger battery, but how much more range do you get? Guess what, if that's what you're worried about, this is not the car for you, just go buy the standard Ionic 5. That's all I have to say about that. If you're worried about range and how much you're gonna to have to charge, this is not the car for you. I hate to tell you that, it's not. This is for people like me who are like, I charge at home, but at the same time, I wanna be able to take something to the track, and then I also wanna just have a head-turning car that I can have the most amount of fun possible for the value, for the dollar, on a daily basis. So, that being said, I cannot wait for this to get officially priced out. Um, I will be, you know, all things pending, putting a deposit down, as long as it comes in at a reasonable price. So that is why I'm excited about the Ionic 5, but this is definitely a car that I will likely want to replace my EV6 with. So thanks for tuning in. I know this is different than the videos I've done. I just wanted to express my opinion on why I think the Ionic 5N is a phenomenal car. Really excited about early 2024. Let's see what it holds and let's uh, hope that I can get my hands on one. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.